Hello, everyone. We are continuing our interviews, which will be for everyone in, as you can see on the screen. Uh, to be coming up on October 31st is our main event. So we'll have a lot of live stream information and performances, but most importantly, will be videos of productions and different organizations making a difference for people living with disabilities. And so today, Barbara Lee is going to be introducing Suzanne Carter. Carter Production, the Parkinson's Dance Class. So, ladies, it's all yours. Hey, Suzanne. Hi, Barbara. Great to see you again. Good to see you too. <laughs> well, I had the pleasure of taking your class last week. So, I hope that you can tell us a little bit more about what led you into this. I've seen you, I've known you for years as a dancer and as a clown. <laughs> Take us back, back, back to the origins of this. It's just right. how you got here. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice story, and it's not just my story. Um, the Parkinson's dance class started in 2009. What had happened is in 2007, I had become a personal trainer. And my, the woman who first hired me um, was working with Tom, Thor Tom Thorson, I think oh, you yes, know him. Yes, he yes. Had, he's a dancer friend of mine, had already become a personal trainer and was working for, for this organization, which is now out of business. So uh, I will give credit where credit with, with, is due um, without pointing any fingers at names and so forth. But um, so my former boss, along with Tom, uh, had, what happened is my boss had seen, she had been in the business and worked with a lot of people and saw more and more people coming through the door with Parkinson's disease. And back then even, they weren't diagnosing it as clearly as they are now, because when Tom or, and I look back, there were people that we worked with that we suspect had the Parkinson's and might've been misdiagnosed. At any rate, she saw more and more people coming in the door. And, and then one of her clients um, who was a renowned doctor had had Parkinson's. And he said, um, Gary Guten was his name. Uh, he said to, to my boss, you know, you really should look at what's going on in New York. They're doing dance for people with Parkinson's. And that's a whole nother really neat story. <laughs> I love to tell stories. So anyway, she got started. She had two dancers as personal trainers. She got us in with Freighter. Um, Freighter at the time was working with people in the community. There was a ga gal doing Tai Chi. We were gonna start up the dance class. Um, people were doing yoga. And then they had their physical therapy, therapy programs, big and loud and so forth. So that's how we got started. It was a wonderful beginning. Um, we started actually at the WAC over by Freighter, but we ended up also starting a class at the Jewish Community Center and that one stuck. And so basically since 2009, I was saying we, Tom and I started teaching there. And then a couple of other teachers came on board, uh, Kate, Man, um, Barbara Wesson, and Jane Brooks Riley. And so for many years, we team, we team taught it, sometimes together, but it's a big responsibility and we all had a lot of jobs, so we just kind of got in there. And then uh, three or four years ago, I just decided I wanted to start another class and that's when I started a class with the YMCA in uh, suburban, Wauwat West Suburban YMCA, Wauwatosa. So the group of us had gone to Michigan to get training with David. And then I finally went to New York about five years ago to get my advanced training. And um, I have yet to go back and I would like to. So that's how it got started. It was a good fit for me. And um, I, when I started with my first class, these people came in through the door, um, Jeff Kramer, um, can't think of, it's just a bunch of other people whose names are escaping me. And we got started, oh, t actually what happened is we worked with Freydert, learned a lot about Parkinson's, took a couple of workshops about Parkinson's, and then Misty Owens, 
was actually living with Tom while she was getting her master's, her, her BFA master's at UWM in dance. Well, Missy Owens was dancing with Mark Morris because this program is based off of the Dance for PD approach in, uh, the, from the Mark Morris Dance Group in Brooklyn, New York. So Tom and, and Misty were friends and she said, well, here you do, you know, you're gonna get started. And so Tom and I got started with Misty's help without the training and then we went back and got the training. So it's just kind of a funny thing. But my first class, I don't know, it was magical. And I just, when the, these people would start to move, I was very touched by it. There was something in the way they approached movement. And um, they were, they're adult learners, they're not kids. So it was always a lot of fun, we cracked a lot of jokes. And um, it, it just stuck with me, it just, it just stuck with me. In fact, when, I don't know if you want to hear another story, oh, but sure. when I first started to dance, decided I was going to go on as a modern dancer. My brother, who has passed away several years back, told me a story that I'd never heard from my other siblings. I called and said, Mom, I'm going to go into modern dance. Well, they're all in New Jersey. I'm out west studying modern dance. And my mother slammed the, the phone down and said, what the heck does she think she's doing? And Richard and Michael and my brother and my sister got that, you know, got the brunt of my mother's wrath. And I'm out west. And then years later, when I sent her the stuff that I was doing, it was written up in, uh, we ended up also working with the, uh, eventually with the WPA. Anyway, the program got written up and there'd be pictures of things that we were doing. And she finally looked at me and she said, you know, Suzanne, now I understand why you did what you did and why you're doing what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Full circle. So there's a lot of organizations, Barbara, I can't even remember all of them. I mean, we started with Freydert and Vicky Conte would work with these community organizations. Uh, it was just a beautiful setup that were contributing to the whole picture. And then she retired and uh, things changed, you know, different organizations. And now the WPA, Wisconsin Parkinson's Association does exactly that. Um, they are a wonderful organization um, and they've come and bubbled to the top. And the, the, the APDA is in Wisconsin, is in Madison. So they do the same thing the WPA is doing in the Madison area. And the WPA is doing the stuff through the state, which is support groups. There's a process when you, when you become diagnosed, there's a, a process that you would want to get involved with. And you get diagnosed, you want to get into a support group. And so the WPA tra trains facilitators, helps you to find out where that is. Then you wanna start putting together your exercise and movement modalities. And that can be done in any combination. And uh, it can be dance, it can be exercise, it can be treadmill, it can be Zumba, it can be weightlifting. Um, in fact, another great story was this, this gentleman, John, and he had moved back to the area to be with his, closer to his family. And he was involved, there was a gal that was doing this treadmill. Uh, I can't remember, Trace, uh, Stefan, Terry Stefan had developed this treadmill program, walking backwards on the treadmill forward and, and then an exercise program. Anyway, he took it with her twice a week. And then on Fridays, he would take the dance class and walk in and he'd say, this dance class today is like nothing I'm doing all week long. <laughs> and so it, it meant a lot. And then, so like I said, with WPA, so that's sort of the, and they do their, um, like you're doing a, a virtual <clears throat> program to educate people with disabilities and that's WPA does that on an ongoing basis. And, so, and they have social events and fundraising and it's, it's the go-to place. So, cool. um, so and then of course, Dance for PD. Hmm? If people wanted to take your class, what would they do? Um, they can take my class. It's it's free. It's offered on Thursdays. They just have to be able to have the technology, as I was talking to Jory, um, the Zoom. 
uh, ability to get on to their devices with Zoom. They have to pre-register, so I sort of have to uh, go through some preliminaries. How mobile are you? Um, emergency contacts. Have you ever done this type of thing before? You know, and so it's just a, some formalities. And then they can get the link and, and come in and start dancing with us. Okay. Most of the, the class is tailored to the situation. Uh, we don't, we, we used to dance together and we used to um, move around the room a lot more. So it's a little bit more in the chair. It's based off of the Dance for PD model, which is done in the chair and then standing at this point, moving around a little bit in the space, or you can do it all in the chair. So um, we follow the template, we follow the, the protocols. Um, so that's really all it takes. And it takes just a little bit of interest, caregivers, if they want, to take it along with, with their uh, person that they love that has the Parkinson's, they're welcome to join us for free as well. And uh, it's, it's really about, with Zoom, I have dramatically changed my teaching and I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. I, I'm looking for deeper connections. I've had more time to plan my classes. I see it more not as a personal training. Oh, we're, we're getting this muscle to do this thing. We're doing that automatically. It's the healing, it's the art, it's the magic, it's the imagination, it's the rhythm, it's the music, it's the moment, um, it's the wishing, it's the uh, imagining you're someplace else. I mean, um, and I've embraced that uh, to the point that I'm hoping that we're moving in really full full range of motion with feeling and empathy and, and all that kind of, uh, and, and uh, sometimes we, so, sometimes we have choreography as you well know, Barbara, and you can handle all of this because you're so smart and so, <laughs> so, you know, agile and so open, you know, it's keeping the mind open. But some of the patterns are um, set, we call choreography. Sometimes I'm asking them, to make up movements on their own, not always, but sometimes. And then uh, sometimes the things I'm doing have a concept, but the, it's, it's, it's not scripted with every little punctuation mark. Um, well, one thing I noticed in your class is that it's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I suppose, yeah. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I, I always, I, I just honestly, at every class, I become so touched by the music, the way people move. Like when you took the class, I had this experience. Jory might be interested. It, it's the first time this has happened on, on Zoom. Barbara joined the class and I felt energy from, from the students for the first time coming my way, like I was really in the room with them because I know her so well. And then I translated to everybody else and they boosted up their, uh, their interest and their, their effort to a different level, to the point that I really felt we were like dancing, not like a kick line or anything, but we could do that too. <laughs> we could do that. It's all valid. <laughs> well, we were just, really dancing together. Just so people know, uh, I, I've seen you do very funny <laughs> So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about the role of humor in your work and what, what this work has done to you. Yes, and actually you were asking me how to, to sign up. They need to contact me just through my, um, they can always go to my webpage. I mean, I'm owning the Zoom Parkinson's, but it was originally the group of us. So with the Zoom, so they can go to carterproductions.com and they can see a lot of stuff, a lot of samples. They can also contact me because I have a YouTube page and they can see combinations. They can also see that on the web page. And then to join the class, Carter Productions, that's Carter with a C, Productions with an S at the end, at sbcglobal.net. So now talk yeah. about <laughs> Yeah, I try to, um, I have a set of jokes. 
sometimes. <laughs> and I've had to kind of just go to them because I need some new ones. Um, but I just, if I take myself too seriously, it's down the drain. Um, I just believe in this stuff and want to have fun. So I got to work on some more jokes as a matter of fact though. But yeah, I, I like to um, think that we're doing things in a, in a fun, humorous, not take yourself too seriously, but be safe about it way. Um, yeah, I, yeah, these are the moves, but you know, come on, have fun with it. You know, there's no right or wrong. You know, what are you doing over there with the foot there, huh? Come on, let's kick it up, you know, or, or whatever. <laughs> so, and besides, I'm from Jersey. I always remind everybody I'm from Jersey, so they better watch out. Or, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what that means, but. <laughs> so. And it's kind of like funny, like Carter Productions. My mother used to always say, Susie Ann, you make a production out of everything. <laughs> so, Carter Productions was great. And then the other thing was, I mean, I started doing my, you know, I had been dancing in companies in, in New York and then not any big famous companies, but a few little companies. And then Susie Bauer here and Panish and Vanish. Um, but then when I turned 50, you'll love this story. I knew nobody was gonna hire me as a dancer. So I figured I'm gonna do my own shows. <laughs> I'm gonna just make myself main stage. So my first show was Welcome to My Midlife Crises. <laughs> and, uh, but I don't perform on stage anymore. Um, I am retired from that. Um, and my goal actually, Barbara, you were inspiring me is I, I saw this legacy thing that you're working on with your webpage and I'm gonna try to get a little sample and explanations of all my shows oh, cool. as a legacy to my students and to my kids and grandkids. Yes, excellent. Um, but anyway, like that and uh, oh well. So, uh, and then I, I'm retired a little bit from personal training. I, I, I'm not taking new clients. So it's, I, I teach yoga with the Zoom, with Carter Productions. I teach a workout class on Mondays and then we have the Zoom Parkinson's dance class. Um, so, and it's just, it's for me, it, the Parkinson's dance class is what keeps me going dancing because that means if I'm gonna dance, I have to be taking a dance class at least once a week or every other week. Um, get online, now I can get online and study with David. He's, he's, you know, I can just access it. Cause they weren't online free. Previously I could just, and I was telling Jory, I hadn't seen, I mean, he's just, he's almost as wonderful as you, Barbara, David Leventhal. <laughs> so David Leventhal was a um, dancer with Mark Morris. And what happened to them, they bought this building in um, Brooklyn. And there was a, a woman by the name of Ollie Westheimer, I believe that's the correct name, or Westheimer, Westheimer, I think. And her husband was a very well-known doctor in New York who got Parkinson's. So she headed up the Brooklyn Parkinson's Association or something. So she was in the building that the Mark Morris company had uh, bought and were starting to move into teaching their classes. And they said, well, we'll do outreach classes. So Ollie Westheimer comes knocking on their door and she said, would you guys consider doing a dance class for people with Parkinson's? And that's how it really got started wow. with the Mark Morris dance group. And that was, I think two, two years back further than we started, something like that. And then of course we follow their model. And there were also the Hubbard Street Company in Chicago at the time was doing something with Parkinson's, but, but Mark Morris Dance Group is the one. So David left the company to run the organization under the Mark Morris. So you can imagine how Mark Morris was thrilled to lose a good dancer, but no, I mean, it, it, you know. And Misty Owens, and um, Higginbotham, I think. I think it was David Higginbotham. I think they're the three, I think I have that right. Um, the three original organizers and David was the director. Misty went back to uh, Texas uh, for different reasons. She had to leave the company and run her family's dance studio there. She brings in a lot of tap dance right. and it's really cool. David does a lot with the modern. And so, so people have different 
they have a, 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 a plethora of, of teachers that teach once a week and it's all from, each person teaches a different day. This is so yeah. cool, Ben. I mean, just getting your background, but also the background of this whole method of teaching is pretty awesome. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. It's it's not willy nilly. Um, I, you know, I, there's a gal in the state. There's a couple of people that are certified. I have not become certified. I am interested in becoming certified, but I do have a lot of experience, which does count for or something, and we're, we're, we're trained with him. But there was a gal, but these, a lot of these young kids, you know, they're moving on with their lives. They don't necessarily stay, but now we have Lisa Pritzel, who I'd love to uh, give recognition for. She's just a wonderful colleague who's working on her certification and we'll have, she teaches in Green Bay. So she, she's doing exactly like what I'm doing in Green Bay on Zoom. And she got me going on the YouTube page and so forth. And then there's another gal, Claudine Naganuma. She's not really from this area, but her husband is. So they came to town and she, she certified out in California. And uh, she teaches a class online, but does a whole bunch of other things too. But she has roots here and she came in and did a couple master classes with us at the Y. So it's just a really great network of people. Um, if you go to the web page and see the crane dance, oh my God. This gal in California contacted all these teachers of Parkinson's and um, you could get involved or not. And it was with the, you know, the origami crane and which is a sign of healing. And you submitted a two minute section of your work. She compiled it into like four hours of material that was brought to the World Congress in Japan in 2019. And it's gorgeous. I mean, I've seen snippets of it and I have it all, but it just went like, a you know, continuously through the concert. It just kept going through the, the conference where you could come and see these amazing things from all over the place, Australia, Canada, uh, England. You take a, a workshop with David, they come from all over, not just the United States. So there was, some people had costumes, um, some people went to special places and it's all on video. Um, wow. And so it's just all kinds of little things like that. So this is kind of a, a whole worldwide thing now that can help people with Parkinson's, but also seems like it has ramifications for anybody with a disability. Because I know for myself, I'm partly paralyzed, but I was able to take your class. This was really fun. And, <laughs> so, yeah. Thank yeah, you so I much for that. This was fantastic. Yeah. And I I'll, could go on and on, so. I know, I know, it'd be great. And it'll be really fun for people to actually see the workshop that you let. Thanks Thank for bringing that to us. It's really important. Thanks so much. This has been great, because Suzanne, I mean, some of the things that you talked about were so connecting of, of when something happens to you, what do you do then? What's your reply to life? Um, and you, know, you got into this, like what else are you gonna do? So you got into this. And quite literally for myself with what I went through with. And once I recovered, I wasn't gonna be able to get a job someplace working eight hours because I still couldn't handle it. So, okay, I'll start a nonprofit. <laughs> um, but then, you know, it's, it's here, this is, this is what drives it all. And uh, it's great to be able to bring these pieces together. And, you know, this is our, our third interview today. We interviewed Barbara a little earlier, so you'll have to wait to be able to do that. Um, but the power in the stories and the laughter, I love that you talked, that you hit in the laughter. Laughter is the best medicine that is continuous. So it's a great message to continue. And that was in each one of these interviews, laughter. So just think of that message and how it's going to be starting to build. And uh, I'll tell you, it, the people in these classes, the resilience and the way they live their lives, they touch me. And I, I swear to God, I have a tear in my eye after every single class.
And a smile. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And um, this is going to be great. Going to love having you being a part of it. And uh, people will be able to check out your vendor page on our event page. So that'll be being, is actually in the process of being built for you right now. Thank you. All righty. All right. Well, thank you very much. And everyone just uh, make sure you check out everyone in, uh, everyone in .org. And October 31st is our big day. So don't miss it. Thank you.